All right, welcome everybody uh, back to another uh, episode of our special edition of the Ode Chronicles. I am again Libby Reitman, your moderator. And um, for those of you watching for the first time, the our special edition of the Ode Chronicles is meant to highlight some of our 2021 Ode to Laz backyard style ultra marathon runners. Um, this race is coming up here in July and we wanna get to know the competition. So tonight I am joined by Anthony Russell. Did I say, I got you yep, right, yep, right? Yep. <laughs> right? I've been known to slaughter names. <laughs> um, so Anthony is with us tonight and I just wanna say thanks for joining us. And um, I am gonna set a timer so I don't get too long winded. So your 15 minutes of fame are gonna start <laughs> now. <laughs> There we good. go. All right. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, where are you from? And have you participated in one of our events before? Yeah. I, uh, so I live in Milan, Michigan. It's just like a little bit south of Ann Arbor. Um, I've participated in, I did the winter version of the Ode last year. And then I did the virtual version of the 12 hour event last year as well. Um, I didn't run the, the main Ode. I was still feeling a little nervous about COVID. So I kind of skipped that one. And then, um, I've been a volunteer at the the 2019. The, I think that was the original ode. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I worked at the the turnaround during the day for the end of the day, and then the first part of the night. And then I was also volunteering at the ode to the night. Um, I think like last month. Yeah. So, awesome. Um, yeah. Well, uh, thanks for coming back to us, and thank you for volunteering because I know we yeah, always absolutely. need volunteers. Um. So, you know, as a return uh, competitor to the trail, you've run it in the winter. Have you run it much in the summer months? So I ran it this morning and that was the first time I've ever run it in the summer. Okay. Um, it was, I definitely, it was a little bit nicer, in, you know, than the winter, but there were quite a few um, little thorny branches kind of dangling out over the trails. Ah, okay. That made it a little interesting and, uh, it was, it would definitely was interesting trying to dodge all the, the roots that are out there. Yes. Yeah. They, uh, they tend to be packed down by some snow or ice in the winter, yeah. <laughs> um, which I'm not sure if that's good or not, but, yeah. but yeah, um, summer tends to be fairly dry, you know, on the first half of the course when we start out. And then as you come around to that other section can get a little bit boggy, you know, toward the yeah. end there, but Somebody was nice enough to throw some like slats down for us. So hopefully yeah, they, haven't, they haven't sunk in the mud yet. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. I'm, I'm okay. a little worried about that one section where there's like slats like a foot away from each other that you kind of got to step over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, sometimes it's, if it's been super dry, it's dry enough to go around them. Yeah, I was looking like that this morning. It looked like, it, I think it rained last night over in, yeah. in the area. And so... It was, it was a little river running through that section, okay. so I did All some right. stepping across the slats. Uh, what time were you out? Was it real hot out yet? Uh, I started at 8.30 in the morning, okay. so it wasn't too hot, but it was, it was pretty humid, and then I did, I did a few laps there in the day, and then I tried, I'd never run the night loop either, so I tried yeah. just kind of getting off to the shoulder and just kind of seeing how much, I just wanted to see how much like kind of up and down there was in the night. Yeah, yeah. What'd you think? Um, it's definitely it's nothing too too steep, but it definitely has some good good hills to to walk up. Yeah, it it. I guess I would describe it as rolling. Yes, you're, I would you're, agree. You're not really flat too often, even on the road. So no, no, yeah. That's what I was thinking. There might be a little more flatness, but yeah, it was, you're right. It's just constant rolling. I'd yeah. I'd run the Ohio Backyard Ultra in 2019 and that one where the the I think that the day loop kind of had um it was a they're not quite so rooty but there were some pretty big hills I, I don't remember the exact thing but I think it does have maybe a hundred more feet of elevation gain than okay. the ode but uh the ode is is a lot more tricky in other ways yeah yeah well uh well we can't wait to see you out there in the summer so um, yeah, very how, how did you first hear about the event? Um, that's a great question. I, I don't remember. I, I think it may have come up when I was talking with someone during the Ohio Backyard Ultra. Okay. I am not 100% sure. Okay. 
And uh, so then, you know, what brought you into ultra running or backyard running? Oh, so I got into ultra running. I, uh, I guess I, I kind of ran a little bit in high school. Um, and then I kind of gave up on a little bit in college. And then I started running kind of longer races as soon as when I got out just to kind of have some way to stay healthy. And uh, I started doing the marathon and I, I tried a couple of times to just keep improving my marathon time, but I just wasn't really having a lot of fun. So I, I decided to kind of look for some, some longer races. And so I, the first ultra I found was the run Woodstock in, uh, in I think it's in, yeah. in hell, Michigan. Um, yeah. And so I started, I did the, the 50 and hundred mile there in, in, in back to back years. And I, I, I thought that was a really fun race and that kind of got me, got me hooked into it. And then I liked the, the concept of, of the backyard. Cause that, you know, I think a lot of people kind of maybe have similar sentiments where it's like, you know, even if you're not fast, you can still have a chance to kind of like, you know, be competitive just by keeping going. And I yeah. think that that whole, that whole concept is really exciting. Yeah. You don't really have to beat anyone. You know, everybody, right. everybody has to get back within an hour and you all start together again. So yeah, the fastest yeah, yeah. person, it doesn't really matter if you're the fastest person or not. So you just have yeah. to be consistent, right? So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's the major challenge, so, is maintaining that consistency. Um, so, yeah. have you made any changes Definitely. transitioning from doing regular ultra events to backyard events? Have you, have you done anything different in your training or anything, like, really noticeable on race day that's different about the backyard? Uh, I have, for the backyard training specifically, I have done like some kind of practices where you, pra like I practice uh, having that kind of like hour cadence. Because I think sometimes in, in other ultra runs, you can kind of just take as much time as you need and you're kind of on your own time. And like, sometimes you can take less time, sometimes you can get more. But with the, the backyard, you kind of, you know, you need to kind of do what you have the time for and then get going. So I definitely incorporate some kind of just like practicing that hour cadence and just making sure I can kind of swap out things that I need and, and be ready for the next loop. Okay. And and you said you did the virtual 12, you did the 12 hour virtually yes. last year, you said, right? Yep. And, and that's, I mean, even doing it virtually is a good practice of swapping out gear and eating and everything. Were, did yeah. you, were you able to go the full 12 hours when you did it? I did, I did do the full 12 hours. I did, um, I ran by my house though, which I will say is, has a bit less elevation on each loop, but. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Was so. it, was it more challenging to be like right outside your door every lap? Because <laughs> I think I would have been like, and I'm done. I'm going to go take a shower and sit on the couch. <laughs> that might've taken more <laughs> mental fortitude actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think I was, I think I was had a goal in mind and I think I was able to kind of, kind of stick, stick through it. I think I did kind of waver, waver a little bit at the end, but yeah. overall it was pretty good. I had my, my wife was, was, has been my, my crew person for most of these races and she was kind of helping me out, and, you know, oh, good. helping me keep going. <laughs> so, so what is your goal this year? Um, so that's a good question. I had, um, I had some issues where I had an issue with the inflammation in my spine and, and brain that took me out for a lot of the end of June and most of May. So I, I missed a lot of training. And so uh, I'm feeling feeling better and I've been able to string in, I think about maybe two and a half good weeks of training. So I think my, my A goal is to get to the starting line healthy and not not overdo the training, trying to build back up. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's going to really depend on how, how the next couple of weeks go before I really can think make me make like a good number estimate but okay. I think my my main goal right now is if I feel like I'm pushing anything that's that's not feeling right I think I'm going to really try to try to back off so I'm okay. trying not to set myself up to try to hit some number and try to force myself to get you know yeah. work into kind of some kind of injury has um has your doctors given you the the okay to <laughs> get back out there yes I've gotten gotten the okay I had uh if I, everything everything should be fine with the with the running Okay, good. All right. Well, we're glad you're recovered. <laughs> yeah. That sounds kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely scary. I was, in, I was in the hospital for a few days, but I think it's, I definitely, it felt really, you know, really nice to be able to get back out to, 
to doing running, you know, to be able to run. I think it was, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people have this, a similar sentiment in the in this community where, you know, it's such a big part of your life and just to kind of not have that as a daily part of your your routine kind of, you know, kind of messes with you a little bit. And it just, it felt really nice to be able to, I think kind of having that gap kind of makes you, me make me, really, you know, really appreciate like how, how much this kind of means to me, so. Yeah, yeah. It, it is amazing when, you know, you think about different, different illnesses and or disabilities and what if I couldn't do what I do, you know, it really does yeah. really appreciate, appreciate your health. So, and your body. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do you have a go-to recovery meal that you just love to, to chomp <laughs> on after your big events? Oh, that's a great question. I, I don't think I have any kind of like good recovery meal but I will say I'm like on hot events I I do love eating maybe some ice cream after okay yeah that's that's usually that's been a popular choice <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um if you had to choose one song or band to get you pumped up at the beginning of an event what would it be I know that's very broad <laughs> question so uh, I think it had to be something by like Alexis on fire they're like okay. a yeah they're like a hardcore punk band out of, out of Canada and they definitely play some songs that, that <laughs> would get me amped up nice all right well you will keep that in mind <laughs> <laughs> um if you could predict how many laps the last person standing this year will have to run what is your prediction? Uh, I don't know if you looked at the race lineup, but yeah, yeah, we got some. We got some pretty serious people coming. Not that there haven't been in the past, but yeah. So let's see. I'll say one seventy-five, one hundred seventy-five miles. Okay, I like that. I could get. I could get behind that. <laughs> I, I definitely think we we might be getting to one hundred and fifty or more. Yeah, yeah I think my, so. It looks like looking at the ultra sign up. It looks like there's a very, very stout competition. Yeah, yeah, we've got a good crowd this year, um, and we have in the past too. But I think you know more people are hearing about us now, so it's it's kind of fun to see see people from out of state signing up, and and yeah come check out Michigan. You know, it's behind me. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not really there. It's just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you have a favorite piece of gear, uh, or food or anything that you want to have with you, uh, for this race that you train with all the time that you bring with you to every event? Is there like an old vest that, you know, you haven't washed for the last 10 years or something? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do have, I have a, like a, a vest that I wear for almost every race, but I think for this, this race, I think I'm going to use, um, I, I can't remember what brand, but I have like a little handheld that I've been training with because okay. I figure if we're coming back every, I don't know, every hour, it seems like that should be plenty of water, but I'm going to ring the vest just in case, okay. you know, and if it's, I feel like if it's really hot out. And you find out that we, you know, need some more water out there. Definitely want yeah. to be prepared to handle that. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good choice just to have it as a backup if you start getting behind or something. So, yeah. Yeah. But I, I do know a lot of people um, do utilize the handhelds. So that seems to be a popular choice just so they aren't encumbered by anything. Um, but yeah. yeah de definitely bring whatever you got. <laughs> yeah. I think it's better to have it than not. Yeah, I was able. To, I was able to use the handheld today, and just I kind of used my car as like a an aid station, and just yeah. filled up when I came back and <laughs> downed plenty of water back at the car. Good, good. How were the flies over there this morning? I got I got a bit up pretty good. Were they out and <laughs> I mean, about? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think next time I'm gonna have to do something. I saw. I think Tad mentioned maybe like a deer fly patch or something. So yeah, you know, I'll have to look into that. Really, by July, they seem to go away, knock on, oh, okay. knock on something. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, this time of year, they're out and about, but then it, all of a sudden, it seems like they just one day disappear. So if you go out there again, yeah, slap that fly tape on the back of your hat. I caught, like, I wasn't out there yesterday, but I, I was over by uh, where I live in Brighton, mm -hmm. and I, I caught, like, about 20 flies. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so... 
Um, here's another one for you. This is a goofy one. Oh gosh, we got less than a minute. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> so fast. So um, I'm not sure if you're a Game of Thrones uh, fan, but would you uh, root for House Stark or House Lannister? <laughs> I think you got to say House Stark, right? I right, absolutely right. say House Stark. Well, yeah. you know, some people like to stir the pot, so. Yeah. <laughs> and are there any uh, TV shows, Netflix shows that you are currently binging on? Uh, see, we're j uh, so I'm just about to start the, the newest season of Kim's Convenience. I think oh. it's a CBC show on yeah. uh on Netflix thing. Yeah, it's is a great show. I love the first few seasons. So hopefully that I think this might be the last season. So hopefully it, it ends okay. out on a strong note. Very good. And okay, I think I can squeeze one more in. Let's sure. see. Do you have a running bucket list event? And what Ooh. number one on it? I'd really like to try one of the 200 miles. I was thinking that the the Bigfoot 200 seemed really really cool, but I I have been really intrigued by that uh, the Cocodona 250 that just had its first first running this year. Yeah, I saw so that. I have I have one 200 mile on my bucket list. I think it's one of those two. Okay, awesome. Do you have a prediction of uh, what year you'll try to do it? Will it be as early as next year? <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll have to see if the, the travel. What kind of what kind of travel is opens up next year? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully everything, right? Yeah, hopefully it seems like we're at least the US seems like we're trending in a good good direction where yeah. I, I feel like now it's probably fine to travel all around the US. So Yeah, yeah. Well, I I hate to cut us off. The 15 minutes goes by so fast. Um, but I appreciate you coming on with me. Um, if you could do me a favor, and that is to email me a picture of yourself that you would love to put on the cover of this amazing episode. Uh, okay. I really appreciate that. And we, it, it's nice to, uh, to see, you know, people from, a, you know, in their photos from other races or even just sure. like laying around the house. We don't care. So, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, I've been watching. I've been watching the ones that have been, the ones that have been coming out so far. Good. So <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot of fun meeting everybody. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun to watch them. Yeah, well, we look forward to seeing you in July, and uh, I look forward to doing a couple of laps with you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. See you then. <laughs> Take care. Bye.